All right, what's going on guys? We are here in Melbourne, Australia. I'm here to speak at the Ultimate Evidence-Based Fitness Conference alongside a lot of guys that I've learned a lot from over the years. We are currently here in our Airbnb in Melbourne. It's great to be here. I'm gonna show you guys some of the behind the scenes, some of the training that I get up to this weekend. It's just gonna be lo-fi here on the old small point and shoot camera. Hopefully you guys are cool with that. I didn't bring Rashawn down here with me. Uh, but yeah, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. In any case, I think it points toward the fact that this stuff is really prevalent on this platform. You have some of the biggest creators on Instagram still promoting detox teas, fit teas, and all this stuff, and it's getting hundreds of thousands of likes. So this is a concept I want to introduce to the evidence-based community, because I haven't really seen anyone talk about it, and it's getting really popular on YouTube. Like some of my most popular videos now are on direct net training, and I actually think it has merit. People are more interested in science, it's just a matter of reaching people more effectively. And then from the science application end, I think it really does become an art form of blending science and experience. I don't think one without the other is really gonna do you all that much good. I was at the Hong Kong seminar, and now he's completely shredded. How many weeks out are you, bro? Uh, three weeks out. Three weeks. Dang, bro. Shout out to him, I'll put his Instagram right here. Dude, that's so crazy. Yeah, there's a reason why I didn't want to do that pose. <laughs> Good stuff, man. That's it. Guys, we are here, day two, with the man, Captain America. Uh, yes, if you don't know, I sometimes get confused for Chris Evans, or rather, Chris Evans gets confused for Eric Helms. The movement that you want to be doing here, in my opinion, primarily trained to hit extensors, is as far as you can go back, thinking butt, back, 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 and let me know my butt is no longer going backwards. Yep, that's my range of motion. Most of the time when you want to become a better power lifter, you're going to be squatting low bar. In a low bar squat, you essentially improve your leverages and allow the extensor muscles to do some more work. You reduce the amount of total work done. You spread the load to more of the muscles of the body so that you can accomplish uh, something greater for an external load. How many people currently train their neck? Does anybody do it directly? <laughs> Literally no one oh, has like ever done it. Did you, did you hear it from me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I would probably put the neck in the same category as the calves and the forearms. I don't think anyone's gonna win a bodybuilding show based off their calves or their forearms or their neck. But if you have people of equal caliber, I think it can help tie the physique together. You should be able to work up to be at around like a 45 pound plate for sets of 20. That's like a pretty reasonable strength standard, but definitely don't jump into that. Has anyone seen The Office when Dwight Schrute is doing this? <laughs> Have you guys seen that? Yeah, so that's actually legit. Um, so yeah. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you know. <laughs> All right, what's up guys? So it is Monday, uh, the day after the weekend of the seminar, and I felt like everything went super well, and then the applied stuff was actually really fun. I got to learn some stuff myself from uh, Dr. Mike Isretel and Dr. Eric Helms. Speaking of Dr. Eric Helms, I'm actually on my way over to the gym now. I just, I just got an Uber on the way, and we're gonna head over to the gym, and we're gonna get in a workout. So he's currently running a full body split five days a week, which I think is really interesting, and that's the split that I'm gonna be doing next after I finish my upper lower program. So I'm excited to get some insights from him on that, and so I'll check in with you guys over at the gym. <laughs> Legs are so shredded, man. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> Can I get a look at them first, actually? Dude, it's not even like crazy lighting and the feathers are still out like crazy. So yeah, if you guys can't tell, Eric is what, one week out? Not even? One, like six days. Six days? Yeah. Crazy, man. Maybe you can just explain what your current split is, how you kind of have it set up, yeah. and what we're gonna do today. Yeah, so I spent about uh, a year and a half trying different splits out with the same volume, so same equated sets per muscle group. Uh, and then trying upper lowers. And what I landed on with what felt the best that would do the most volume was full body splits. So I carried that into prep as a way just to manage fatigue. So I actually train full body five days a week. I typically have one, I think one to two leg movements a day. 
and then three to four upper body movements a day, five days a week. It's really interesting. I've never trained with quite exactly that style, yeah. but I'm going to after this. Like, yeah. It's been like three years since I did that original interview with Menno on training frequency, and I was saying to him yesterday, I'm like, I'm finally convinced. So, we're kicking off with leg press. What, are, what exactly are we doing here? Super sitting with calf raises. I'm gonna look for three sets uh, between eight to 10 RPE. I kind of use a dynamic, auto-regulated model, so I'll be doing anywhere in the six to 10 rep range. Gotcha, so you're gonna do like maybe three, four, five warm-ups, kind of gradually working your way up, yeah. assess the RPE from there, try to get yourself in that eight to 10 zone and just do three working sets like that. You got it. And th this is something I've never tried before, so you're gonna do your leg press, then move your toes down, keep the weight the same, and then do your calf raises. My strength is actually very similar on leg press Interesting. calf okay. raises. Yours, yours may not. Yeah, may uh, we'll see. Like we'll see. I don't train calves as much, so it'll be interesting. You to don't see. need to. Yeah. You'll yeah. Calf raise, uh, <laughs> One week out, angst. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plays me second because of my calf. Are you serious? Someone said that? Oh wow. That's, I think that's a nice thing judges say when it's like they were just better than you. Right. Oh, no, it's <laughs> your calves. You can't do anything about that. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's genetic. You're fine. You would have won. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing Eric said here too is doing the calf raises supersetted with the leg press. It'll give you a little bit more extra range of motion as your dorsiflexion range of motion improves on the leg press itself. So if you struggle maybe getting all the way down, this might be a tip to help you out with that. This is the first working set. We worked our way up to four 25 kilos and one 15 kilo. All right, let's go Eric. Damn, that depth is crazy. <laughs> Holy crap. Nice work, man, solid. Eight and a half, that's, that's what I would have guessed too. That's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, so I track using Gravitas app. It's got my whole history. So ironically, I actually did this back Wednesday, December 26th. And I'm not as strong as I was apparently when I was 100 kilos. December 26th of over a year, over a year Oh ago. wow, you got data from way back then. Yeah. That's apparently crazy. I did this traveling somewhere. Jeez. So that's, that's not... What's the app called, Gravitas? Gravitas. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a really good, really good app. You might check, check it out. Analytics. Cool. Yeah. Let's go, Jeff. Nice. There you go. Good stuff. Beautiful. What was the RP? Call it an eight. An eight? Yeah. Is it less than an eight? It might, might have been a seven and a half. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Nice. RPE. Definitely eight and a half. Oh, okay, okay. Two five at least. At least with the two decimals, I like it. Nice work. That's yeah. good stuff. So you're you're not like forty kilos heavier than me. My what range of motion is a lot. If I had to go as deep as you, there's no way I'd be able to do that. So that. So I that. Just, I just know my lower back starts around past a certain. Right. Point. So you're just proving your Canadian citizenship right now. That's <laughs> yeah, very. Exactly. It's very humble of you. <laughs> So that's it for the leg portion of the workout. Yep. So up next, we're doing, it's a superset, but we're gonna rest in between each exercise. We're doing a flat dumbbell press and then a seated cable row. First working set, let's make it count. Solid. Eight and a half, nine? I can definitely like nine and a half. Nine and a half. So now do you keep the weight the same and just cut a rep or? No, I'll drop down. Drop the weight back a bit, yeah. Yeah, I was expecting that to feel a little easier, but. Gotcha. Hashtag six days out. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so diced. <laughs> there in the mirror. Whoa, dude, that's nuts. Hold on, hit that. Man, oh man, that's crazy. All right, 46 is, that's 101 for the Americans. There you go. Easy. Push it, come on. Come on. Okay. Nice. Good stuff. That was better. That was a much better set. Yeah, that looks really good. Good decision on the weight. Mentally prepared for how heavy it was that time. Yeah, you, you knew it was going to be actually a heavy load, the kilos getting yeah, in your ring. Kilos, man. Turn your whole world upside down. And you get your wrist wraps. Yeah, that too. That helps, yeah. <laughs> the crutch. There you go, Jeff. It's lightweight. Dude. Oh my god. 
That's juicy. You kind of keep more of an upright posture, hey? And it's more like scapular retraction based. Yeah. What do you think? Just curious, because I'll do them like this sometimes. But I'll really stretch the lats here. Yeah. Drive down, you know? Yep. What do you, what do you think of that, like lean forward? Do you like it or not? Well, there's, there's, it's a bit of a trade off, so. So when you lean forward, you yeah. do get the stretch into the lat, which yeah. is just good. Uh, but then, of course, you're not generating all the force from shoulder extension. Right. You're getting, ext you're getting extension from lumbar. Right. So it just depends what you're trying to do. I think there's nothing wrong with that. When you're doing these, are you thinking about it as a shoulder extension, like a lat movement, or are you thinking about it as a scapular retraction and a trap movement, or both? It, it is both. Yeah. If I just did shoulder retraction, there would be nothing. Yeah, yeah, if right. If I did bicep curls, it'd be <laughs> So, it, yeah. I mean, it, it is definitely a compound movement. Right. But I do think of uh, both. And so I don't pull high. Right. I do pull kind of center. Gotcha. Um, you can definitely do a row and bias it more towards shoulder extension by pulling low like you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, it just depends on what you're trying to do. I gotcha. So now we've got barbell upright row, just to about that 90 degree angle. Try to push down, come back, barbell curl. I'm about the same strength on my upright row for high reps, I am for like a barbell curl for mid reps. Gotcha. That works out. And then we're not doing like supers, like no rest, because you know, the curl would fatigue the upright. So resting between a little bit. And he's kicking the RP up to like nine to 10 each step. For three rounds? Three rounds. Gotcha, okay, that's why I'm out of breath. This, this is a bonus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, I need the do rag. The do -rag. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you guys kill me on this. Talk to him. So the upright row, what are, you, what are your, you know, one minute thoughts on this? So you, is it safe? I, I get very fatigued by people trying to put exercises into either bad or good or safe or dangerous camps. Our body can move in so many ways, it always has, you know? And what kind of load you use, what range of motion you use, your individual biomechanics should always be considered. There's no such thing as a bad exercise. In the upright row, sure, if you get really, really high, there is a higher impingement risk. But it's also a very low load exercise. I've literally never met anyone who's hurt themselves doing bodybuilding style, good form, upright rows, especially if you do them like I would recommend, like most will recommend, just getting right at about that nine degree angle. Yeah. You know, when you look at your shoulder and just straight up, I mean, it's basically the same thing as a lateral raise, just yeah. with a different rotation. If you feel pain, don't do it. Right? <laughs> it makes too much, that makes too much sense. Bring on the hate comment. <laughs> There you go, come on. There you go, come on. Man, that long head is just so feathered. Holy crap. Bruh. <laughs> come on, big boy. There you go, a horseshoe. There you go, nice. Such a crazy core exercise. Yeah, that's the only reason I do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, keep fighting. Push. Let's go. Come on. Control it. Let's go, control the way down. There you go, nice. Good fight. Let's blast through this. Yes, sir. What was the first question I was going to ask you? You're going to ask me uh, why do I choose to train full body? That's right. So I just asked myself, <laughs> right? Yeah, so I think the reason why I wanted to clarify this is I think a lot of people focus on like the, the, the MPS response. Oh, like you're an advanced lifter, you have a shortened MPS, therefore you got to stimulate it again. That's largely theoretical, largely not based on myofibrillar data, which we have very little of. If there is an effect, it's either neutral or like so slightly positive. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the most part, the benefit is that it's, it's a way to manipulate volume spread. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, I find when I only have a finite amount of energy in any given you know, time period when I'm prepping, I don't want to do RDL, front squat, leg curl, leg press, leg extension, calf raise, mm -hmm. you know, to get the kind of volume I need. And like that, that would kill me in prep. Mm -hmm. But if I did like we did today, leg press, calf raise, and then have upper body, I have way more energy and I can distribute the same amount of volume with less fatigue over the week. Right. Doing four more full body sessions. Right. So it's more right. about volume and fatigue management. Right, right, right. The hypothetical question I at the seminar was, and some people might think the same thing, it's like all we did for legs today was three sets of leg press. Now, I can attest to the fact that that was actually 
pretty challenging. Like, yeah. because when you say RPE 8 to 10, like he means RPE 8 to 10, and I think a lot of people think that RPE 8 is like, eh, that's like sissy work. But it's actually like freaking like, you literally mean if the like, gun to your head, you could get two more. Exactly. Right? So yeah. it's actually quite challenging, and I, you, I, not to answer your question for you, but you basically said to me that you don't think that that's below some like per session volume threshold. Like you, you don't need to do nine sets of workout no. to get that work, workout to be effective. You know? Here's another cool thing about what this meta-analysis tells us. So it's either neutral or beneficial to go higher frequency. If it was true that there was a per session minimum volume, it would start to go negative. Right, because then if you because the volumes, right, exactly. yeah, the yeah, volumes yeah. that are used in, in, in the literature are relatively low. We're talking ten to twenty sets most of the time. So if you did ten sets across five days, it's only two sets per, per muscle group, and they've done that. Right, and right. that is either equal to doing like three times as many mm -hmm. in some cases, or better. Right. So I mean, if you think about it physiologically, why would there be a minimum set volume? And the only thing you can come up with, oh, you can't get a pump, pump or, or you don't cause muscle damage. But those are, I don't think those are those are those are causative factors. That those indicate that yeah, you train that muscle group. I'm not saying they're, they're bad things at all. Right. But I also, I have no issue getting a pump. Yeah, pump I got sets. a pretty good pump today, to be yeah. honest. And the gym was freezing cold, so that was an argument I used to make. It may not be valid. I, I just need to experiment with it more myself. I guess. And it may be valid for some and not others. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I use movements that I've been using for over 15 years that I have a good mind muscle connection with. Mm -hmm. Another thing, I just, just to let everyone know, is how individual this stuff is, is I spent I mean, over a year trialing this to get the right combination of exercises, distribution over days, and like a few different mesocycle versions. Mm -hmm. And you know, I also change my rep ranges specific to the movement, mm -hmm. uh, and then I use you know a kind of a flexible number of reps to hit a certain RPE target. Mm -hmm. So I think when you start to use a full body program that's too rigid, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do 15 because I wrote down 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the RP is too low, yeah, or it's not exactly. a good fit for the movement, etc. Yeah, you just stop. It's like, okay, there's three sets of 15. I got to 15. I'm done, even if yeah. it's too light or whatever. Even in the case of like 8 to 10, you could be leaving a significant amount of tension on the table by just stopping just because that's what your program says. Yeah. So I do, I did like that. We did want to else. just talk about basically the progression model. In prep, my strength is not as consistent as it is in the off season. Instead of going right, I have a set target of eight. I have a, an RPE target and a rep range. Right. So I let progression come to me. So like if I'm going to train in the, let's say, I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to do six to 10 reps on this and I'm going to stop my first set at eight. Then I'm going to hold with that weight and try to do two more sets and not go over an X RPE. Right, right, right. So it's like an RPE stop. It auto-regulates it and it allows strength to build at will. Mm -hmm. And when, if it's a shitty day, my strength's not going to build. Then I just do what I can that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, gotcha. And that, that kind of lets me know where I'm at with prep, whether I'm under or over recovered, right. um, and it gives me good feedback. Gotcha. All right, man. Well, it was an amazing workout. Uh, hopefully, we can get in again. Good luck with your show this weekend. Thank and then you. Eric's going to be doing the Muscle Mayhem. I'm going to be there, so maybe you guys will see him again. I'm going to be vlogging a little bit over there. Uh, leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll we'll see you guys all here in the next one. Pick Peace. up bodybuilding. Pick a new wave of the <laughs> Play future. a game of horse with someone. Play a game of horse and beat him with your horseshoe. <laughs>